Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 26 of the chapter Alcohols, Phenols and Ethers. We have been doing the reactions of phenols under which we did the first category of reactions that is electrophilic substitution reactions. There are five types of reactions that we would be doing. One is Cope's reaction, reimer timmons reaction, reaction of phenol with zinc and oxidation. So moving ahead with the discussion, in this video I'll be only doing Cope's reaction and the reaction of phenol with zinc dust. So let us start. Cope's reaction. Cope's reaction is also a kind of an electrophilic substitution reaction. But still we do not study it under electrophilic substitution reaction because it's not one of those general electrophilic substitutions. The electrophile here is carbon dioxide which is a very weak uh, electrophile and yet it reacts because of the special conditions of the Cope's reaction. That is why we do not study it under electrophilic substitution reactions. We se study it separately as a named reaction. So let us start. Cope's reaction Phenoxide ion, which is generated by treating phenol with sodium hydroxide. This is phenol treated with sodium hydroxide. It results in the formation of sodium phenoxide. So this is the benzene ring O is negative and Na is positive. Right? So it is sodium phenoxide. This phenoxide ion is highly reactive. It makes the benzene ring or the phenol even more reactive towards electrophilic substitution. So we say phenoxide ion is generated by treating phenol with sodium hydroxide and this phenoxide ion is even more reactive towards electrophilic aromatic substitution. Hence, it undergoes electrophilic substitution with carbon dioxide. So it is even more reactive towards electrophilic aromatic substitution and therefore it undergoes electrophilic substitution with carbon dioxide which is a weak electrophile. What results in the formation of this? As a result of this, what is formed is orthohydroxybenzoic acid. Ortho, ortho, ortho position, hydroxy, OH is here, benzoic acid. This is benzoic acid now. If you remember, in the IUPAC nomenclature, when you have two functional groups or multiple functional groups, there is a sequence of priority, out of which carboxylic acids are the are highest in priority. So whenever you have a compound like this benzene ring, which has a carboxylic acid group and the OH group, you would name it as a carboxylic acid because this is a stronger functional group. So we call this, it results in the formation of ortho, the two adjacent carbons are uh, substituted, ortho hydroxy, this is, this is the common name. So ortho hydroxy benzoic acid and the IUPAC name of this would be 2 hydroxy benzoic acid. This is benzoic acid and on the second carbon you have the OH. Anyway, I just deviated to the IUPAC nomenclature because it's important to remember this also. So this is the product that is formed as a result of uh, Cope's reaction. So in other words, which is formed as the main reaction product. In other words, what is Cope's reaction? Cope's reaction is where we take phenol, we make it react with sodium hydroxide to give us sodium phenoxide, which on further reaction with carbon dioxide gives us the main product, which is 2-hydroxy benzoic acid with carbon dioxide and hydrochloric acid. So let us go about this reaction step by step and understand what's happening. This was phenol. We made it react with sodium hydroxide and it resulted in the formation of sodium phenoxide. So the sodium from sodium hydroxide and the hydrogen from OH, they got exchanged. So here you get O, O, N, A and as soon as this happens, it becomes an ionic compound. So it is, this part is ionic and this is covalent. So it's kind of a mixed uh, compound. So you get sodium, sodium phenoxide is formed and here the hydrogen will combine with this OH and result in the formation of water which we think is understood therefore we do not write the 
Um, normally in organic reactions, we do not write all the products. We assume that whatever is left, you will be able to make out what it is. Yet, since I'm explaining it to you, I just, I would like you to know that here, hydrogen and OH will combine to form water. This sodium and this hydrogen have got exchanged. Now, once the sodium phenoxide is formed, the phenoxide ion is very, it activates the ring towards electrophilic substitution and it is highly activating. Since it is highly activating, the carbon dioxide now, it gets attracted to the benzene ring, but not in the ring, but at this point, electrophilic, the O negative, the carbon dioxide will get attracted to that. So you'll get O and the carbon dioxide comes here, OCOO, and the Na positive comes here. So you get O, C, O, O, N, A, right? This is phenyl sodium carbonate. So this is phenyl sodium carbonate. And this happened where addition of carbon dioxide took place at 400 Kelvin between 4 to 7 atmosphere. These were the conditions under which the reaction took place. Now this is not very stable and it is kind of isomeric. This COONA with this oxygen is not as stable. If the COONA could attach itself on another an adjacent carbon, it would be more stable because it could be more balanced. The weight would be distributed slightly. So it forms an isomeric form in which what happens? The hydrogen of this carbon, like you know in a benzene ring, every carbon is CH, CH, CH. So this carbon remains as such, but the hydrogen here takes the place, the COONA breaks, it comes here and the hydrogen takes its place. So nothing is happening, only a rearrangement of atoms is taking place, right? That is why I say it is isomeric. So this is isomeric with sodium salicylate. This was phenyl sodium carbonate, which is not as stable, but it is isomeric with sodium salicylate, so it automatically by itself changes into sodium salicylate. And once the sodium salicylate is there, is major, you know, in the mixture, you will have some amount of this also, but majorly you will have sodium salicylate because it's a more balanced compound. So sodium salicylate now would react with hydrochloric acid. And when it reacts with hydrochloric acid, again, the double displacement is, uh, the displacement reaction is taking place. The sodium will come here and result in the formation of sodium chloride, right? And the hydrogen here will go and take the place of sodium. So again, a similar situation that the sodium and hydrogen will interchange their positions. There is a double displacement that is taking place. So NaCl will be the product and what you get here is OH and here COO and the H comes here, so COOH. The moment COOH comes, this becomes the main compound. We are not going to call it phenol now. This would be uh, the what benzoic acid. This would become benzoic acid and the OH group or the alcoholic group would become the substituent. It would not be the main or it would be the functional uh, secondary functional group. This is the primary functional group. So the name of this compound, IUPAC name is 2-hydroxybenzoic acid and the common name which is commonly called salicylic acid. Why is it so important, the Cobes reaction, this named reaction and why do we give it uh, why do we give it so much importance is because actually there is one medicine that we use very commonly that is aspirin and aspirin is prepared from this salicylic acid. So although in the textbook the next step is not given but I would yet like to discuss that part that once you get this this is what the reaction is this is Cobes reaction it ends here but the same salicylic acid is then used in the preparation of aspirin. So this is salicylic acid when you make it react with acid and hydride acetic acid is CH3COOH you know that right CH3 COOH and CH3 COOH right if you remove one hydrogen or rather if you remove a water molecule if you dehydrate this acid so one hydrogen and one OH is removed from this and the two 
molecules they combine together to form CH3 CO CH3 CO and both of them are joined by an oxygen this compound is basically a dimer of acetic acid and it is known as acetic anhydride. Why anhydride? Because it has been dehydrated. A molecule of water has been removed from the, uh, from the molecule. It's not, we don't call it dehydration because dehydration is just evaporation of water molecules. But this is anhydrous means a water molecule has been removed from the molecules itself. This, the hydrogen, two hydrogens and one oxygen belonged to the molecules and they have been removed and thus it has been dried up. So it is anhydrous. So this salicylic acid, it, when it reacts with uh, acid anhydride or uh, anhydrous acetic acid it, and in the presence of an acid, what happens is that the COOH remains as such. There is no change in the COOH. But this OH, look at this structure, out of this, the hydrogen here is replaced. So O remains as such and CO, CH3 attaches to it. So CO, CH3 attaches to it. And what are you left with now? CH3, COO and the hydrogen attaches itself here. So you get CH3, COO. H, that is acetic one molecule of acetic acid is given back so that is what is happening in this reaction that the COOH remains as such and the O and H the hydrogen takes the place of uh, I mean the the dimer if you would call it it breaks down it uh, the acetic acid molecule anhydrous acetic acid molecule breaks down and the hydrogen takes the place of CH3COO it results in the formation of acetic acid and this part that is CH3CO attach, attaches itself here as COCH3 to this oxygen. Now this molecule is called aspirin and this is how aspirin is prepared. It is the common name of aspirin is acetyl salicylic acid. So if you see what has happened this is the acetyl group so acetylation has occurred. So acetylation of this reaction has taken, of the salicylic acid has taken place and therefore you get acetyl salicylic acid which is called aspirin. And if you talk of the IUPAC name of aspirin, it is 2-acetoxybenzoic acid. It is 2-acetoxy, the, the benzoic acid is the main, uh, is the parent hydrocarbon and on the second carbon, you have two acetoxy group attached. Acetic acid with oxygen. So acetoxy, benzoic acid. So this is the preparation of aspirin. Now we come to the third kind of reaction, which I'll be doing in this video, which is reaction of phenol with zinc dust. What happens when phenol reacts with zinc dust? This is a very simple reaction. Therefore, I thought uh, I'll just add it here. Um, and in the next uh, video, we'll be doing the rhymer time and reaction and reaction of, uh, sorry, and oxidation. So I'll just rub this off now. So when zinc dust reacts with phenol, all it does is removes the oxygen. It kind of deoxygenates it. And when it deoxygenates it, the molecule that you get, if oxygen goes out, you get ZNO and the hydrogen attaches itself to the benzene ring to form a regular normal benzene ring. So what happens when reaction of phenol with zinc dust? It is uh, when phenol reacts with zinc dust, it is converted into benzene on heating with zinc dust. All right. So I'll pick up the next video from here um, when I do it. So if you uh, want to watch the other parts of this chapter, please click the link that appears on top of the board. And if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends, and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.